경기 시작됐습니다. 지난 시즌 GSL 마치의 우승자 장민철 한시 이어서 일곱 시 쪽에 위치해 있는 테란 최성훈 이 경기와 약간 비슷한 일단 출발을 해주고 있는 최성훈 선수예요. 자 장민철 선수는 이제 안마당이 오픈되어 있는 이선장에서 최성훈 선수도 젤라가 동굴에 서로 조금만 네. 더 안정적으로 아, 취할 가능성이 높죠. 그런데 장민철 선수가 지금. 공공제어서 이후에 두 번째 가스를 안 짓는 걸 보여줬는데 이렇게 되면 은 테란의 입장에서는 거의 한 7,80%의 확률로 원가스 4천원 감면을 생각을 하게 되고 어, 거든요 네. 네. 장민철 선수도 안마당을 가져가지만 최대한 안정적으로 지금 할수 있고요. 네. 어, 이거 어, 들러붙었어, 들러붙었어, 들러붙었어요. 네. 아, 들러붙었어. 장민철 판단 미스. 그렇죠. 장민철 선수가 추석자를 잠깐 시경을 못 써줬고요. 아마 정찰 차단하는 건설로봇 저쪽으로 시야가 잠시, 잠시 돌아간 틈에 네. 자, 그 틈에 그런데 어, 네. 일단 양 선수 모두 정찰합니다. 장민철도 정찰 지금 하는 것 같은데요. 네, 네. 장민철도 들어갔어요. 장민철도 들어갔어요. 네. 이거 그때 봐도 지금 장민철 선수가 위기입니다. 관문을 다 서둘려 놓은 게 아니거든요. 지금 당장 관직선을 아무도 안 되거든요. 여기 어, 추격자 맞았고. 습니다 추격 타령고 완성된. 아마도 연결체 완성돼 있고. 또 다시 연결체. 연결제 지키려고 해봐야 못 지키고 이고요. 네. 네. 있었습니다. 아, 그렇죠. 폴트에 아, 최성훈 선수의 의료선 4기 합류하면 4기까지 보였어요. 이거 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 지금 의료선 내색 그냥 병력 다 태워서 언덕에 실어 날아오는 것도 그렇죠. 문제거든요. 실어 날라서 네. 수정탄만 파괴한 다음에 날라지는 건 맞죠? 예. 병력 이거 관문만 한번 동력 끊기게만 만들어도 이길 수 있어요. 날라지는 걸못 봤나요? 아, 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 
강 선수 진짜 잘하네요. 진짜 마이크로 건지러 센스 감각. 아 축상입니다. 네 이건 저번 생각에 봤을 때 이거는 아래쪽 들어가고 어? 이거 오른쪽. 어? 자 이거 어떻게 해야 될지 아네. 강 선수 잘 아래 왔다는 것 때문에 이쪽으로 한번 올라왔는데요. 거기다 오프레이트 앞으로 가져가 가겠지 가겠지. 자, 내려와요 내려와요 내려와요. 네. 아 이거. 어 이거 이거 네. 공성 모드를 모든 공성 전차가 풀고 있잖아. 아, 이리야 이리야. 자, 보. 나 해전을 쏘아. 다리 잡은. 이쪽 살짝 뺏어서 버티고 있어. 아, 이 정도 또 이득으로 도망가면서 도망가고 있어. 네, 그렇기 때문에 이윤열의 지출. 아, 자 이번에는 예, 이번에 이정우 역시 싸움이 좋은데요. 공성 모드 되고. 공성 모드에 약간 부정감이 있었는데요, 이윤열 선수. 자, 장관이네요, 장관이 아니라 공성 전차가. 맞습니다, 맞습니다. 자, 신속하게 영향을 주지 않습니다. 지금부터는 도전 능력, 도전 능력이 승부를 가리게 됩니다. 그렇죠. 그렇습니다. 자, 옥탑 치고. 외부 이것 때문에 여기서 도전을 제거하면서 또 빠지는. 자, 그럼 넓은 지역도 잡았고요. 시정원의 이런 도전. 진짜 뛰어난, 전진하지 못하게 만드는 게 좋습니다. 이거 와, 이거는 도전 능력이 좀 위험해. 자, 이번에 불곰의 힘으로 제거하고 있고요. 하지만 아래쪽에 이은자를 보여주고 있어. 박빙입니다. 네, 진짜 박빙이에요. 공성 전차를 모여야 되고 소수 대 소수의 싸움에서는 공공의 명이 더 세고. 네. 자 그런데 아직 이윤영 선수의 업데이트가 잘 되어 있어요. 바이오리 방금 전 뭐라고 했습니다. 아, 뭐라고 했어요? 그렇죠. 공격의 방어 이 상황이기 때문에 어떠하게 자리 잡으면 답 없죠 이 정도. 이윤영 공성 모드. 자 여기 잘 잡고 됐습니다. 정우리 그렇게 유리한 게임이었었는데 이게 이렇게 되나요? 이것이 이윤영인가요? 그렇습니다. 타이밍 잡고 올라가면서 자 그리고 이 공성 전차 아 공성 라인에. 이윤열 계속 올라가요. 붉은 점 계속 올라갑니다. 이윤열. 오케이. 안마당 쪽 공격 중. 동시에 쪽. 이정훈 또 이런 판단 진짜. 소름 돋는 판단. 이정훈. 자 안마당도 들었고 안마당도 들었고 그리고 제일 확장도. 제일 확장도 또 들었습니다. 와. 그리고 운영비요. 다섯시 방향도 사실. 다섯시 경력만 버리게 된다면 네. 제가 할수 있거든요. 시간 내린다. 스피드 싸움입니다. 네. 엘리전. 메카드 병력도 지금 모든 병력의 업그레이드 상황 네. 좋습니다. 이윤열. 공성 조차 없이 해명만으로 지금 들이닥치는 이윤열. 여기 하는 것도 시간에 가면 넓은 지역으로 이동해서 싸워있죠 이정우는 네. 지금 이윤열 선수가 잘해주고 있는 측면은 뭐냐면 은 자신이 더 세다면 싸울 수밖에 없는 지역으로 계속 유도를 하고 있는 거죠 자 해명 한번 이 싸움은 이정우는 괜찮은 것 같은데 공격이 잘 안되거든요 이렇게 유리한 게임을 이정우 선수 하지만 이윤열이 그 역전에 대한 이 불가사 이하는 팀 역시 이윤열입니다 최재민! Back here at the GSL up and down matches, we're halfway through today's games. Uh, we saw a little bit of a weird Protoss versus Protoss. You know, normally our Tosis and I joke that um, if you go to Code, you know the, the Code S guys get to grab the Code S, you know, amulet yeah. pendant. Uh, but I think in that Code case, guys to grab the, the, the Code A guys to grab the the Code A Seatron. But this time, I think he has to grab the Code A Seatron and kiss the Code A middle school lunch lady. Because that was pretty brutal, man. She got her hair net on. She got her hair net on. She's she got, got a like big potato scooper thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. She's never in a good mood. Yeah, can, I have, can I have that piece of pizza? She's like, gives you a different piece. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about our next players here, uh, which I think are going to give us better games than what we saw before. All right. We're going to have Xenix Coca. This guy is the guy who's coming up from Code A. And it, actually, if you look, even though his uh, wins are – Smaller than his loss is really the people he actually lost to. I mean, there's really no shame in oh, losing to individuals of that caliber. Leenock and Lucira, come on. And then he beats great players like Squirtle and... He beat himself, Coco. Yeah, somehow he he defeated himself. His doppelganger came out. Well, maybe it was his nerves that he finally got over by beating Squirtle. And now on our other player over here, Liquid Genro. Oh, yeah. Also not with the best uh, record here, but you guys, you know, you got to take it. Uh, for where they are in the GSL. Code S, I mean, if you can even go 50-50, that's quite a good thing. Oh, yeah. As you can see, beating players like Paul Rainbow Hongan. In fact, he's 21-19 paces, so he's over 50-50. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we look at his recent 10, I mean, it's four wins, six yeah. losses. But Any pro and SD, now, where they get deep, like, all the time, man. These are great yeah, players. Yeah, those guys are pretty too. scary. So, um, 
I am really hoping that Liquid Jinro wins. I, I like think the guy. everyone is. Now, the loser of Coca against Liquid Jinro then goes down uh, to face off against Zeno. Now, Zeno's got quite a reputation behind him as being a solid Zerg, but if you look at the raw numbers here, not only with his uh, full-time record, but his recent 10 matches, Zenio is starting to enter what I would consider to be a bit of a slump. Yeah, he certainly is. Uh, he's He had a little bit there where I was like, wow, you know what? Zenio's top five Zerg in the world. Yeah. And I mean, nowadays I'm not quite feeling that quite as much. This last, this you GSL season, his, he didn't look that great in his group Well, play. It, it reminds me of Inca, where we saw Inca uh, do so well in, in season one. We're like, oh my God. And you and me used to talk about it in the subway. I'm like, that kid is smart. Then he started faded out a little bit here, hmm. and he kind of became this generic filler Protoss here at the tournament, and now he's here in the finals again, so maybe we're going to see something similar with Xenio. Xenio is very determined. He His play is good, but he just doesn't always pull out with a, a victory. Yeah, It's not like pitiful games. No. Like, I'm not going to say any names, but San, you know, today. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty, pretty bad, man. It was. I it think was. I need to go Men in Black and erase that game from my memory. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, uh, we're going to see better games here. Coca, um, you know, I, we don't know a lot about this guy since we didn't get to personally cast his games, but clearly he's good. Mm -hmm. He's talented. He made it to the up and down matches. Up and down matches, though, pretty unforgiving. You lose this, you go all the way back down to it's, Code A. Yeah, it's he like does not want to Sisyphus. do that. He's got the rock at the top of the hill, and then he sees it up, roll down again. You don't want that to happen. When no. you go back down to Code A, you get one best of three. And then you have to go through the most grueling qualifiers that you and could ever imagine. on top of that, think about this. We have so many good players here in the up and down matches. You might end up facing off against yet another champion here in your Code A uh, matches. Absolutely. Because the, the makeup uh, of who's where, Code S or Code A each season is changing dramatically. we got a lot of uh, champions here that are actually just trying to fight to either stay in up and down matches. Some of them had to fight just not to go to Code B mm. when they were in Code A. So... It's uh, an interesting series that we've seen thus far. Not one where it's players are always being consistent. So, Jinro, he had a very frustrating loss in the previous mm. um, season. And, yeah. Well, Code S, I should say. Well, it's actually this season, but you know what I mean. Yeah. And um, I think his Terran versus Zerg is good. He's proven. He's, I, he's great, TV. He's very no well-rounded. That's something very important to mm. consider. He's a very well-rounded Terran. Well, he's lucky to have two Zergs, so he only has to practice TVZ for That this. is true. And that's actually, that makes a huge difference. And, and the, he hates TVP. That's the his, Team OGS that's his has worst, a lot so. of good Zergs. It does. So, he has players like Xenia. Oh, wait a minute. Dun, dun, dun. They have yeah, more than that, though, him. right? Yeah, of course. But, yeah, Players so, like Cezanne. He's a great Zerg. Yeah, uh, exactly. You know, he's got Hey Pro right in that house The Wind and you know, people yeah. like that. So he's got great he has training partners. Um, you know, OGS being a giant team. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Certainly. But, you know, when you're one of the only non-Koreans in a tournament like the GSL, you're not really just representing uh, your native country. You're sort of representing the rest of the world. So that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of weight on your shoulders to deal with. So we'll see how well he performs. Hmm. I'm curious. I'm curious to see what kind of strategies he's going to do. General has proven to be one of the smarter GSL players um, out of the entire yeah. scene. He's got yeah. very... Uh, calculated specific builds. They're clearly his own builds. And he's been playing a solid macro style for longer than most players in the league. And yeah. that's got to get you some nerd credit. There's right a period there. of time where everybody else was like, ah, CVs, sending him at my opponent. Not this guy uh, who we're talking about oh. on the right. No beanie, no sunglasses. He is going completely. He loses the next game. He's going to take say his shirt off. <laughs> I think. This is going to be an awesome match. ZVT, classic StarCraft map, a uh, matchup rather. It's going to be like the sequel to Starship Troopers here. It's going to be epic with better acting too. Oh, certainly. The first map is Metalopolis. This is the map where Zerg uh, really likes to be in cross positions against the Terran. They can cut the map in half. Sometimes tech the Broodlords or Ultralisks. Delnaga Caverns is a map where Terran wants to push and try to control his gold base with a planetary defend, wear the Zerg down, Crevasse. Actually, I don't have enough time to talk about Crevasse, but the countdown has started. We'll get to that later if we even go to a 30 deciding game. Right now it is Korea against Sweden. Coca against Liquid Jinro here at the GSL. Get ready.
for some awesome TDZ action here, casted by Tastes and Artosis. We bromance over the greatest game of the world. Okay, center left. We have... Tenex Coca. Coca. Has a Coca-Cola there with him. Taking deep breaths in his booth, trying to stay cool. Bottom center, we have our Swedish player, matching the Swedish flag here. Liquid Tinmo. Speaking of Sweden, just like early on in StarCraft 1, Right now in StarCraft 2, they have one of the strongest scenes out there. This little general will win sign. Well, you know, uh, all the Nordic countries have just very developed uh, esports scenes. Yeah, the, they're great, man. So many great players from Sweden. They're one of the esports hubs of the world. Yeah. They also speak more languages than uh, us Americans do and have better health care. Yeah. So they're, they're smarter, pretty stronger, good. handsomer. They are actually taller. Generally, you know, our toes and me are pretty tall guys. are about six foot one, but if anybody ever comes down here and they're taller than us, I always guess Sweden. I'm always right. Always. I believe that, unless I'm mistaken, I believe they're actually the tallest people in the world. I believe it's actually the Dutch. Is it the Dutch? Okay, but I, I was close. So, yes. I was close. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's <laughs> so many angry <laughs> nerds. <laughs> it's not that American. American. I'm like, you're both from Europe. That's a country, right? <laughs> That's in the ocean somewhere. It's an island, right? It's an the island, Queen right? of England is there. The Netherlands, right? That's a bunch of islands, right? <laughs> um, and it looks like Jenner's going to go for, what is that, Tech Lab first? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we definitely will be seeing a Reaper here. Right now, uh, Reaper openings against Sir. Pretty popular. In fact, Reaper openings against everyone is pretty popular. Against a Hatchery first play, you can definitely put some nice pressure on. Uh, speed won't be up for quite a while. And it... You know, he's going to be able to whittle it down, scout what's going on, and make a command center if that's what he ch so chooses to do. Uh, it looks like this drone might slip in there. Slippery drone. You coy drone, you. Oh, didn't slip in. <laughs> turned around. It turned around. Oh, oh my god, three SCVs are coming. Uh-oh. Jinro looks like he wants to make a bunker tasteless. Oh, interesting. Yeah, he is going to do some kind of Reaper bunker rush. Yeah, already has another uh, Reaper queued up. So he will be doing some pretty heavy pressure. Hey, you know, this. this is what I like about watching Jinro play is his builds are very, um, they're his own builds. Ooh, look at this. Oh. Now, one thing you should take into consideration here. Uh-oh, beautiful surround by Koka. That's a big deal. The Reaper is up there, and he's going to have to micro very strong. He might jump down inside of oh. there. Oh, I think he must control oh, that. No. Oh, no. I see exactly what he wanted to do. Yeah. He wanted to jump in between that little triangular section. And now he has the to cancel. But yeah, you're right. He wanted to jump in there. He's making a little pocket, a little nook for his Reaper to jump in, just like melted butter on an English muffin. Wow. But uh, definitely a little mess up there by Jinro. He has to be extremely frustrated with that taste. Well, this is a bad way to start yeah. off. Uh, you know, the series here. Such an awesome opening build, but he is still making Reapers. Unfortunately, he takes a lot of damage on this one, but you can kite Zerglings very, very well with Reapers. Do you remember, uh, this reminds me of a game I played against you. It was uh, that tournament in Vegas a long time ago in StarCraft 1, where I had this build mapped out that I'd beaten a lot of Terran players with that involved that uh, two-gate Zealot Rush followed up with a cannon yeah. at the ramp, and I actually, it all came down to me actually putting the not canceling a cannon that was one hex too close to a bunker so I could shoot it down and I lost to Artosis. I wanted to kill myself. The Iron Wall of Artosis slayed you. I remember that. I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, Jinro uh, still doing some harassment. The very late gas by Koka. Looked like he was trying to go a little bit more drone heavy. And of course, Reaper is going to be so good against someone who does not get a gas. You really need gas to counteract them. Uh, it looks like he's going to end up at three Reapers. Does have that factory. Probably will tech up now. Maybe. Ooh, he's actually going to get a starport right away. I like that. That's interesting. You know, we haven't seen enough. Two starports. Oh. Uh, ooh. I like this. Jinro's been showing us a lot of cool builds lately. It was very stylistic. I got to say, though, it is a very tough situation. When you lose that initial rush to get back on your yeah. feet. He, he lost he, some mining time. And, and bear in mind, he actually has the potential to end up playing Six games total here. Let's say he loses this, wins the next, loses that. Yeah. Uh, and then he might, he might be in a similar position as Tessa. That's a, a real test of stamina. It certainly is. 
Well, we do have a Roach Warren going up. Roach Warren not going to be too good against Starport. Looks like he is going to go uh, to Port Banshee. Okay. I am loving it, Tasteless. Because uh -oh. that, is, that is so uh, tricky. Circling's going to at least see. Does he see the other one, though? Does he see the... Uh I don't know if he actually I don't saw think he it in the saw air. That it, was, start port. it was kind of going up at an I mean, angle. The second I don't think so, though. Course. Yeah, I think he just saw one. But again, even if you see one starport banshee, obviously that's going to help you out a little bit. But you have to prepare for them in completely different ways. Against two starport banshee, you almost have to like all in prepare, if you know what I mean. Like well, you have to put every resource you have into softening it's, it. It's similar to Terran and Starcraft One having to deal with two hatch muta. Where I'm like, I'm going to make so many turrets, it seems like it's a mistake, but it's yeah. not. Yeah, because they're actually, he's going to put in, Jinro's going to put in, like, his entire economy into that. He'll make Marines as well, but he's going to have so much invested in it. And look at this, still has those Reapers alive and harassing. Awesome That's play. a pretty serious multitask. You know, it doesn't seem uh -oh. as though, what? Uh -oh. Speed uh -oh. stun. Goodbye, Reapers. They swarm those Reapers like bees. That scene, even one Banshee's actually kind of a giveaway. Yeah. He is making a Baneling Nest. His lair is almost done. Roaches, a couple of them are out. And a third base is up for Koka. Decent amount of Queens, but here's the thing. He's going to expect a certain amount of Banshees to come in, and twice as many are going to come in. In fact, I'm surprised he didn't wait for four Banshees. Yeah, I don't know why he would show two right away at the same time. That automatically means there will be four. Well, I think he figured he whittled down so much Queen health that he might be able to do some extra damage, but... Uh, that's how many... He could have two Banshees off of one star port at this timing, so... Still might not know that there's two star ports. I'm curious to see if he's going to keep doing this. I think so. He's adding more barracks. Uh, he's actually stopped Banshee production for a moment. You know, we saw somewhat of a similar build here that he did against... Uh, I think it was Protoss. Yeah, mass yeah. Banshee against Protoss after a quick expand. It was awesome. So cool. Jinro's micro faltering a little bit. Uh oh, oh, links oh. The front. macro faltering. When I, when I said micro, I was messing up. And the Banshees, in the meantime, dealing some damage to that queen. He's going to have to uh, lose all the SCPs at his natural. Should be able to hold up in the main, though, for now. Now, these Banshees can do a lot of damage with Transfusion, a pretty good ability. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. This is going to be. Very effective anymore. He also uh, stopped this next phase of, that, of this build, which should be, uh, I believe, would be met uh, Vikings here because he gooped. Oh. oh, no, excuse me. It was actually Hellions. He gooped the uh, back three. Guess what, Tasteless? Sweater toast. This the Spire just finished. Vitas are on the way. Oh. And this is like the worst spot Jinro could be in right now. Well, he says 67 supply to 110. Jinro is a very systematic player. He's not um, someone who likes to play standard. He likes to have these kind of complicated builds of transition. Well, and so far, I think a lot of this goes back to that first Reaper not doing a whole lot of damage. Yeah, you know, he brought up those SCVs. He had great plans, but uh, just a slight mess up. Really, you can't hear that. Oh, uh, more circuits oh, coming God. up here. I think we should probably see GG when the Mutas hatch. You know, when he gets in there into the expansion, there's just nothing there because, oh my god, the Zergling's still killing yeah. so much here. And even though they're going to die out, the Marines are small in numbers. I got to tell you, as a Zerg player, Tasteless, uh, when you actually end up killing off that many Marines with Zerglings, when you have Mutos on the way, nothing feels better. You, you know, Marines in this situation are not expendable. There's no turrets up. There are just not enough Marines. The Mutos might even actually fly into the uh, Marines and just kill them. Yeah, nice speed to get and by Coco. That, that is Coco's. exactly right. And GG. GG. So, uh, Jinro, just some minor, minor mistakes there, such as that Reaper not being in the right place to jump down. It couldn't jump over the side of the ramp. Right. So, uh, you can see he's very frustrated right now with that. That is, uh, yeah, you got that right. Uh, unfortunately, very frustrated. You know, I, I, I've been in similar situations to this where. Like I said, it actually have to be against you. <sighs> you always go back to that, Tasteless. Um, no, but I had this happen in a tournament a while ago. Where I, I like lost the first game, and I'm just like, oh, okay. Because it, it puts you in a, a bad mindset, basically. No, I, I know, man. You know, it, just recently I missed a, a pylon while four games. Yeah, I know. It, tournament. It was like, it, it's a mistake. That's oh, I was going to win, but now I'm not. <laughs> it's like, oh, and if he had gotten that Reaper down there, man. 
he's going to kill a bajillion Zerglings. Exactly. And I've never seen a strategy quite like that where he actually makes this like little triangle Yeah, it's opening. really cool, though. And the thing is, by the time you start killing off a bunker or two, one's finished, and the Reaper hops in. It's yeah, like, exactly. well, you've lost like so many Zerglings. And, you, you know, no if you're, you're continuing to make Reapers, you can do so much damage. So a uh, general is going to have to... Uh, just execute whatever strategy he's doing next. As you can see, the game will, as you you can't see it, but I can see it. Uh, the game is loading and has now started, so we're going to do this. Let's see if General could come back or if he's going to go down to his final chance here uh, and have to play against Xenia, who I think is a Zerg with a little bit more of a reputation behind him. Let's find out, man. This is the GSL up and down matches. Some go on to Kodes, others go down to Kodes.